Herzlich willkommen zu Nerdplay, dem Cosplay-Podcast hier auf Nerdizismus. Ich bin Lea, eine andere Stimme als die, die ihr bisher hier auf Nerdplay gehört habt. Anja hat das Zepter nämlich an uns Mädels von Hipster Fangirl Fashion übertragen und wir freuen uns, euch unsere erste richtige Folge zu präsentieren. Dieses Mal gibt es den Roundtable mit dem Cosplay-Giganten Cecil Grimes, Juice Gellington und Glatzy K., den wir auf der Comic-Con in Stuttgart aufgenommen haben. Wir wünschen euch viel Spaß mit der ersten Folge. Hallo alle zusammen, schön, dass ihr da seid. Hallo, 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 herzlich willkommen. Wir sind Lea und Javanna. Wir sind hier von Hipster Fangirl Fashion mit unserer technischen Assistenz Jenny. Wir sind außerdem hier im Namen von Nerdizismus, denn wir nehmen heute live eine Podcast-Folge für den Nerdplay auf. Das ist der Cosplay-Podcast von Nerdizismus, den wir jetzt gerade wieder wiederbeleben. Aber heute haben wir was ganz Besonderes für euch. Das ist ein Cosplay-Roundtable. Er wird oh, auf yeah. Englisch stattfinden, weil alle unsere Gäste international sind. Ich hoffe, ihr seid darauf vorbereitet. Falls irgendwer was überhaupt nicht versteht, Hebt die Hände hoch, wir können alles übersetzen. Ganz Ihr laut hört schreien ja. und rufen, Hilfe, Hilfe, ich verstehe nichts. <lacht> wir können aber halt nicht simultan übersetzen, das wäre ein bisschen viel verlangt. Dann würde das Gespräch nicht mehr so schön fließen. Wir wünschen euch ganz viel Spaß. Jetzt begrüßen wir mal unsere Gäste, Gavanna, oder? Äh, genau, wir haben heute drei tolle Gäste die ihr vielleicht schon im Cosplay Kingdom gesehen habt. Als erstes steht hier schon direkt an der Treppe bereit, Juice Gellington. Woohoo! So, our next guest, another one that you might have seen around. She is a cosplayer and a concept artist. And her name is Glad CK. And the last one, some of you may have already taken photos with him. He is a spot-on impersonator and he is a cosplayer of award-winning proportions. It's Cecil Grimes. We do not have a fixed script. We also do not have fixed interview questions. We just want to talk with our guest. You can imagine it like a talk show or, as we call it in the community, a round table, even though the table is square. But we do have one question that we ask all of our guests. I have to say, I already told them so they can think about their answer. It is, how big is your nerd factor on a scale of one to ten? One is like, I'm just a little bit nerdy. And ten is like, oh, I'm the hottest nerd that you've ever met around here. Would you like to start, Cecil? I got a few things I'm uh, nerdy about, but I, I, I'm about a five, a good balance. Good balance five, yeah. I, I get good. so involved in all the Comic Cons that uh, I don't get to walk around and see everything I want to see. So uh, yeah, it's a it's a love hate situation. I love to be in my booth, but I love to see other <laughs> things so I can geek out. So it's building. It's built built from a three to a five. <laughs> and what about you, Glatzy? For me, <laughs> you know what's funny is that a lot of, for example, friends, my coworkers, they think I know everything. Or that I'm a gamer, and I'm like, what's that? So they call me a fake nerd. So I don't really know where in the scale I should be. <laughs> I would say somewhere in the middle, because I know some things, but there's also a lot of things that I that I don't know. Like, I don't know every comic book character or every gaming character. I don't play games as much. I just know basic Mario's, <laughs> just Super Mario, Mario Kart. But yeah, I'd say somewhere in the middle. <laughs> When we were at your booth, A little birdie told us that you're also a big anime fan. Yes, I do love anime though, but the recent ones, like I like the old school ones, my age is showing. <laughs> 90s anime, yo. Yeah. <laughs> but the newer ones, yeah, somewhat familiar, but not too updated. Okay. So how about you, Ju? I think I am five or six. <laughs> I am not as big so as So we a have a lot of in the nerd. middle here. <laughs> For example, I am a huge Disney nerd. But I don't know a lot of comic book characters nor gaming characters. I am really bad at that because I never yeah. played games and I, and I barely read some uh, comic books. That's just like me. <laughs> I only know everything out of movies. Now that you have answered our big question, I also told you earlier that you are allowed to just say anything you want as your first opening statement. Does anybody want to start? Everyone is being quiet right now. 
You're in the middle, you're in the spotlight. Oh man, what does my opening say? Are you guys so ready to party? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Like after this, I'm like, I'm just gonna have my beer. Beer in Germany apparently is really, really good. So. Yeah. And yeah. the good thing is, the legal age is 16. Oh, is it? Wow. For beer at least. <laughs> That's awesome. <Wow. laughs> How about you? Me? Oh, y'all are ready to party. It's <laughs> usually after everything is shut down. You, you don't have to get up that early the next day. Yeah. No, I just want to be, uh, just to thank uh, the Comic Con for bringing me out. This is my second year to be featured here. And it is, I enjoy the people and the stuff you get to see at this one. And it's just, uh, it's really uh, a thrill to come to this one every year. So, uh, again, I'm living the dream. Yay. Yes. Aww. So, my introduction. Yeah, tell us something about you. My opening statement <laughs> is, always do what your heart says. Ha. Oh my gosh, it's getting so cheesy, cheesy at the start. Oh I love my this. God. I think the cosplay community is yeah. cheesy and we yeah. have to be because <laughs> we're idealists. Yeah, let's uh, start to talk about the cosplay community. What do you think about the cosplay community here in Germany? Cecil, you already talked about Comic-Con, so you have been here before. Has it changed over the last year? Last year, I, I did the entire convention without any of my luggage. So I was concentrating on trying to find an outfit so I could do the show. But uh, yeah, that was, that was an amazing experience to come here. The only thing I had was my boots and my belt. Wow. In my backpack. You could go for a stripper, Rick. Yes, I could. You know, I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll do the boxer, Rick. That would have been cheaper. So... That's an interesting story. Yeah, the, the cosplay across the world, you know, um, Australia being so uh, intense. I've been featured in Tokyo, Japan, wow. cosplay. That's like cosplay capital. Uh, yes, and uh, the the, uh, the uh, enthusiasm for cosplay over there. I mean, everybody loves the cosplay, but, you know, when you hit, hit uh, Japan and China, that's just an amazing experience. I saw some incredible cosplays here, just incredible. Um, so it's a, one of those things that it seems like everybody's up in the game all across the globe. They're taking it to a new level. And, uh, you know, since I started doing the set play, the, the Umbrella Corporation and the, what was the military uh, set up next to them, you don't see that in, in the U United States. I mean, there's people that have sets, but that is just incredible. Well, the United States has... Uh way bigger army culture anyway, so they don't have to play pretend. Right, uh, well, that could be true. No, no, that is something that uh, really kind of puts us to a new level. I got to meet those guys, and the, the, I call it set play. The, their set play is on point. We have a great Star Wars set play in the United States, but those, uh, it's, it's just amazing. You know, it's spreading. So the cosplay is working here. I was actually going to say, on top of what you were talking about the set play, because I'm from Canada. It's not like, it's not a thing there. So that's why I was like, what is this? This is super cool. It's like you guys have these booths that are set up that's based on each theme and you have all the space and I think that's super cool. In Canada, we do have some smaller photo booths once in a while, but it's never this amped up. So I think that's one of the coolest things that I've witnessed here in Comic-Con Germany is that you have sets dedicated to certain cosplayers or also like just the certain fans that love these things. Like you've got your Game of Thrones, you've got your Walking Dead, I think that's super cool. And so I, I was very impressed. And also in terms of the quality of cosplay here, I'm pretty impressed too because I know that Germany is where Warbla was like the thing. And so a lot of the cosplayers here are very advanced in terms of their armor making and it's pretty inspiring and to see everybody too. And I've also seen a lot of you know, like cosplayers that have been designing their own costumes based on their own imagination. And yeah, I think that's, a lot of originals. Yeah, a lot of original cool. art now, and so it's pretty great. I was yeah. feeling like an idiot. I said, I, I don't know what your cosplay is. He's like, you don't know, because I just created it out of my own imagination. I was yeah. like, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or you can right. just mesh up some things. Yes. Yeah, or even like Pokemons that are supposed You're to be right. Pokemons. Yeah. But now everyone's cool. like doing a human version of it, and so that's super cool. And... Uh, one of the things that sets Germany apart is your, your weapons rules. It's Ooh. so much, uh, I know it's in silent times and it's sad that so many cosplayers can't come in with their toy guns, but you know, in the United States, you don't get through the doors with even a plastic gun. Here, 
they they get, they put some you know reasonable thought into Batteries. it. If it's plastic, and they look at it and they know it's not a real gun, just you know they strip it and put it in. They don't do that a lot of cons now, yeah, and it's much. sad because you know you got a great outfit, you got the holster, and it's empty. You know, and so that's yeah, what I so really sad. love that they they have some common sense. Mm-hmm. You know, they look at the the weapon. And this, of course, it's 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 a toy, and they let you have it. So that that's cool about Germany. Uh, cosplay in Mexico is actually really popular, but like from three years ago, it wasn't that popular, and it was not really well received by people. So, so it's I've still actually, a growing community. It's still a growing community. Like they are very green. That's the right word. Yeah. Yeah, they're very green. And for example, I've never been invited to any convention in Mexico. Even though I am from Mexico, I went to a convention once as an attendee, and I mean it was small. So when I go to international conventions, it's just like huge, uh, like huge halls. For example, uh, Germany was the first uh, convention out of uh, the American country that ever invited me as a guest. I, I really feel important uh, when I am here because it was like the first time ever that I was overseas. Yeah, and we really do love to have international guests. I mean, there are really great German cosplayers, and they are also oftentimes invited, but we use these big conventions to just get people from all around the world because you can see the local ones at the smaller uh, events, and you can maybe even meet them as normal guests but you want to see someone from somewhere else and someone that you would usually never meet. Yeah, and just to meet and chat, this is amazing to know all the differences between the cosplayers in every country. It's so cool to hear the differences uh, from the conventions, like you said, that uh, with the weapons. Crazy. Yeah. And I just wanted to know, how is it in your hometown? Do you still have any ties to your hometown? Like, the cosplay community in my hometown, I would say, is not even more than maybe 25 people. It's super small. So do you know all of them? I know most of them, <laughs> but uh, they're not, like, close friends. So they usually, like, ask me for, like, help uh, with, like, uh, material choices or if they have issues with makeup, but not, not, like, as a close friend, you know, just, like, for business. Yeah, or as a mentorship, maybe, because yes. you're really good at makeup. That's kind yeah, of they, your specialty, they, right? Yeah, maybe me- mentor, I, I don't know, but they, they do ask me questions and I, I always answer them. Yeah, I would say that's mentoring. <laughs> that's really nice. I'm glad you always take the time to help people out. Yeah, I do. I, I like helping people because when I was young, I got help from other people that inspired me, so I like making the same. That's really cool. Yeah, and that's the best way to grow as a cosplayer. Yeah. So for me, I would say, because I'm from Calgary, Alberta, I don't know if you've heard, I'm in the West Coast where the Canadian Rockies are. Um, We are also still a couple of years behind America, but it has grown since I moved there like seven years ago for sure. Um, I remember back then the Comic Cons were never full, there wasn't as much cosplayers, but they got popular every year, and because of the internet, Because of YouTube, because of all these free sources that you can get online, a lot of cosplayers are learning all these techniques for free that older cosplayers had to research themselves and fail so many times before we can get going, right? So, yeah, in in my community, I'm considered old, even though I'm in my late 20s. (laughs) Apparently here, uh, my friend from Germany was telling me that I'm a young cosplayer in this generation, in a way, because I know a lot of my friends are like past 30s now, but they're like the senior cosplayers that are well-known in the community, at least. So I think part of it is that, of course, you need to put a little money into the cosplay before you can enjoy it, Mm -hmm. and that is easier if you already have a job exactly and yeah. some capital to start with mm-hmm. so maybe that's why a lot of cosplayers cannot start as young as they used to when they did not have all the material and all the tools because now there's a standard for cosplay and people want to start out already on a level that nobody even reached seven years ago exactly. So today, everyone wants to start their very first cosplay with Warbler and with yeah. stitching techniques and with maybe some silicon-based exactly. stuff and the perfect lace front wig and stuff. And when 
I started, I'm 30, so a little older still. Um, I was still sewing costumes out of um, bed sheets and uh, older cosplays that I cut up and stuff, so. I've done that too. <laughs> so I guess it's to me. Uh, America. I am America, America, the beautiful. <laughs> so I'm from Melbourne, Florida. Um, it's a smaller town, you know, as, as, as associated with like Orlando, but it's only 45 minutes from Orlando. And Orlando being the hub of everything, you know, uh, geeky. You know, you got the Disney and Universal Studios and all of that I'm going so on. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> you could, and you got uh, all the other stuff in Tampa, which is two hours away. So in, in, in Melbourne, we do have cosplayers, but it's a very small community because it's a smaller town. And um, I keep in touch with them, you know. Uh, they, uh, they, they, they kind of see me as a, as a celebrity of such, which is crazy, but you know, it's nice to, to, to have that respect of what I've done. Because you know, I'm Rick. I'm not seven different uh, co you know, co comic characters or you know, nice. gaming characters and they, all the huge warbler costumes, but it's my sets that set me apart. Yeah, it's you know. your signature look. Yeah, the, the, the sets I build to take on tour in North America, you know, I, I build all in my house. And it's basically replicas of the, of the scenes from the show. Oh. And uh, that's where the set play. That's super cool. You know, yeah, they, 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 they've termed me the pioneer of set play because I didn't create it. Mm -hmm. I just pioneered it and made it, uh, you know. Made it your own. Yeah, yeah. made it my own. And so many people around the world have contacted me about the set play. Mm -hmm. You know, you usually get contacted, how do I get into cosplay? Yeah. You know, they just, they want to add the set to yeah. their cosplay mm -hmm. and how they do it, how do they get featured, how do they build themselves where they can possibly get featured at shows. Um, I'm not exactly a young cosplayer, <laughs> I'm, so, um, you know, it's a different, uh, different age group that does it, but, you know, I, I don't see any difference because yeah, I, I enjoy it just as much. So is there any other cos um, costume that you would like to try on or is it always Rick for you? Well, right now it's always Rick. You know, I, I've, I always thought about doing, it's been a long con, I just go drew a blank. There's a couple other cosplays, but I won't ever go right away from Rick because it's what is bringing me around the world, you know? Yes. And so when it definitely tapers off, if I haven't gone into the acting, which, which is my next adventure, yeah. you know, I'll be able to come to cons in other costumes, but it won't be such a, you know, so different than everyone else that I'll be able to get featured, you know, for it. But I figure the acting with what I've done with Rick will keep me, uh, you know, a few good, few more good years of seeing the world. We were actually wondering earlier, on your like normal days when you go grocery shopping, do people recognize you as Rick? And they'd be like, "Oh, they, you get the double look," and people kind of like think that you're Rick. They're, well, yeah, when I don't have blood in my face and I'm wearing regular board shorts, yeah, people are sneaking pictures down the uh, down the <laughs> aisle at the grocery they store. They probably are. Yeah, yeah it's because I'm they in might, Florida. And they you, might want to sell them to the paparazzi. Right. To take probably, That's a funny it's in story. Florida. That makes sense. That's yeah. a, it's a fabulous story. So I was featured at the opening uh, panel of San Diego Comic Con last year. They flew me out to be on that panel. And after the panel, we did a bunch of interviews. It was from the bridge, which is a, uh, which is a uh, documentary about fandom. Mm -hmm. And I was in that, so they flew me out as a super fan mm -hmm. of, of The Walking Dead. And so we did the interviews, and then we went on the cruise. Right next to the convention hall in San Diego, they have uh, yachts, you know, four or five yachts. And it's a different, you know, like IMBD, you know, the, which is uh, .com, which is where all the stars put their, their profiles, and Vanity Fair, Vanity. So I went on there. I was sitting through this, and they took pictures on each yacht. My pictures are on Shutterstock for sale as Andrew Lincoln, <laughs> as Andrew Lincoln on this company. And I was like, I don't remember signing a release for this, but it's pretty cool. But it's a really great compliment for yeah, you. Yeah, it's the ultimate compliment. I was yeah. out front trying to get my goodie bag at San Diego <laughs> Comic-Con. Like, where, what line do I go in? Because I, 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 they didn't bring me a goodie bag. I want my bag. And I'm out there with thousands of people waiting in line. And one person takes a picture, and then it's a feeding frenzy. Absolutely uncontrollable. And you know, I'm handing out my business cards. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have some likes from this. So the news crew came out and just, uh, I, the only one I saw was like right here. And I was like, I, I gave him my business card and they're like, and they took off. Dude, it's not him. Oh, it's just a cosplayer. Channel 9, San Diego News. Andrew Lincoln spotted uh, doing photographs out front of San Diego Comic-Con and they had the clip. And that, that, that's so, yeah, 
I get, and I was just in plain clothes, yeah, you know, that's crazy. I, I, yeah. I, I do wear his hats, but, yeah. but everywhere right. I go, it's wonderful. I, I never, it never gets old. I, I, I think it's, it's wonderful that people that's do that. Yeah. It just seems like the people with me get kind of over it. <laughs> so it's probably quite different for you, Gladsy, and for you, Jew, because you are always doing different kinds of roles. But is there one look that is your signature look? Or something that you just really, really love to wear, so you wear it so often that it becomes kind of a signature look? I think for me, I don't know if you guys were at my booth yesterday, but um, the one cosplay that got really, really viral for me was Moana. Because I cosplayed her, and I released the photos as soon as the movie came out, so I was one of the first ones that actually did it. And because I also went home, to the Philippines, it was a family vacation, and so the venue, the lighting, everything was kind of like pretty much on point based on the trailers, because I haven't seen the movie when I did the cosplay. I just really want to time it based on when it was going to get released, and so, you know, you got to think about your strategy, right? You, that's when all the search engines go up, Moana, 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 and then my picture somewhat comes up, and then you post a bunch of pictures on Instagram, And yeah, like it was actually funny because at first when I was posting these photos, I'm like, oh, whatever, it's just the regular reach on Instagram. And then I was like, oh, this is probably the last photo I'm going to post because I'm tired and I'm out of photos. So it was a side-by-side -side photo of my Moana doing this with the same pose as the reference photo. And so that kind of got crazy on my Instagram and I thought... It was a glitch. <laughs> I was like, it was 5.30 in the morning, and I was like, I feel like posting, and then I'm gonna go back to sleep. And I woke up, and it was a crazy amount of comments and likes. It got on Reddit, it got on Cosmopolitan, it got on like Imgur, and some guys were sharing it on Chive. I have no idea what was going on. And my family members were messaging me, yo, why are you on this movie pilot? Why are you on this? <laughs> Because I'm a look-alike, right? And I know that people love that because they can relate to it. And, you know, like, they could be like, oh, my God, it's like they copied the Disney princess based on your face. So kind of like, which is kind of crazy, obviously. But it's just a generic, <laughs> you know, like Polynesian, Southeast Asian look. <laughs> like, there's other Moanas here that look like Moana. It just so happened that I posted first. And I, one of the earlier ones that posted <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the trick, just posting it yeah, as the you gotta first person do that. to do it. Yeah, it's the hype, right? Like, I'm just so happy that I timed it pretty well. I think so. I saw on your Instagram that you met the Moana from the cosplay contest yesterday. Yes, did I did. Her? Yeah, she's I think so that beautiful. that was amazing. Yeah, she's so beautiful and everything's just like on spot. And she hand-stitched everything. That's crazy. See, yeah, like when totally. I did mine, I was like, I have two days, go, boom. <laughs> So, <laughs> I was like, we're flying out to the Philippines, I have to get it done. And, so, and then after that, I fixed everything. <laughs> But you did amazing. Thank you. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> Your turn. We have a new host, it's Gletsy. <laughs> well, my signature look, uh, I'm sure you have seen it, but it's Ursula. I had the idea to make this video of me singing. It was just for fun, I remember that it was... Right after the costume contest at San Diego Comic Con, I recorded myself, I uploaded the video, me singing, and then just making like her a really graspy voice. And it got viral, like millions of millions of views, and I was like, I should have posted that on YouTube. It was on Facebook and it was not monetizable in the moment. Then I was on the San Diego newspapers, LA Times, BuzzFeed, 9gag, MTV, like a bunch of uh, social media pages and newspapers, like on the, uh, they printed uh, stuff like that, and people from the UK, uh, from Germany, from, uh, from all around the world, they went sending me messages. They hey, you're on my, on my local newspaper's uh, front page. And I was like, really? So yeah, that became a signature look. I remember I saw that and I feel, felt really bad about my Ursula cosplay. <laughs> Which I shouldn't, but it was not for a um, cosplay event. It was for carnival. I don't know if that's uh -huh. something you know of. Yes. It's not like Brazilian carnival. It's, um, it's in the winter, so we all have to dress a little <laughs> warmer. But we went as Disney villains, and I, of course, did the Ursula. <laughs> it looked amazing, but after the five days of carnival, <laughs> there was not much of my tentacles left because... Oh, no. 
they were so close to the ground that the filling just started to pop out. It was these, these packaging um, peanut things. And I was just leaving a trail of them behind me when we walked down <laughs> Cologne Street. So. It looked kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, what's the most fun part about cosplaying for you? Is it the crafting and doing everything? Or is it like walking around on conventions and showing your costume? Well, the you know, conventions are awesome. You know, it's, it's where I you, you, where you get that. to meet everybody <laughs> and the travel. But actually, when it comes to building my sets, I have no basically construction or engineering background for, for building sets. It's figuring out how you can uh, use everything laying around in your, in your house that's going to be light enough but sturdy enough to be moved and set up and broken down. And you just get in this zone that, uh, you know, nothing else enters your mind. And with this kind of mind, that's, that's like a wonderful paradise not to have a thousand thoughts. You're just thinking about building you know, whatever, I'm sure with cosplay, doing clothes, me, it's, you know, building sets and so trying to find a hobby wardrobes. Carpenter? What's that? Are you becoming a hobby carpenter? Yes, actually <laughs> I am. Yeah, I bought my house back in 2012 and thank God it has 15 foot vaulted ceilings yeah. because I literally have four main rooms in the setup and then you have bedrooms on the other side. And I had, my first set was the prison And every room was filled with a different part of the prison. And I was like, wow. I guess that's why I bought this house. Yeah. Because I needed that room. <laughs> it's for business. But yeah, building the sets, uh, once you start, it's when you're thinking about it, you're like, oh man, how am I going to do this? But once you start, uh, that, that's, it's addicting. It's addicting and it's peaceful. And you, know, you just zone in. And that's, that's uh, the funnest part, I think. I think that's not only a problem for set building, it's also for a lot of cosplayers because some cosplays can get quite big. And how do you store them? I mean, yours are just clothes and, uh, yeah. uh, and um, <laughs> weapons, but I think you have some builds armors. and some bigger weapons, yeah. armors. You have um, some bigger pieces like yes, this like one. Yes, like fat suits and The stuff fat like suit, that. probably a lot of makeup stuff. So do you have a special cosplay room? When I lived at my parents, the basement was mine. <laughs> and then I moved out and I had no room. <laughs> so um, right now I currently live with a roommate who's also a cosplayer, which is great. We understand each other's mess. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Um, right now I do have a crafting section in our, you know, like main room. And then, so we kind of craft together and watch Netflix together <laughs> while we make stuff. I'm just, um, I'm just looking over because um, the Leah same? and Jenny, they're yeah. living together as well, yeah. so they have a cosplay area. In yeah, there. I know. So, I mean, it's not the biggest compared to when I had the basement to myself, but it keeps me, like, organized because I don't want the main room looking not organized. But anyway, in terms of packing, um, I work for a company, like, my adult job is actually a also set design is like I do props for that and we always have to make sure that our props have seams that don't look like seams. So whenever we cut, when we have like a big rock, we have to make sure like the cracks on the rock, that's the seam, but it doesn't look like a seam, if that makes sense, yeah. right? And so that's what I think of when I make my armor costumes, is like, I make sure that the pieces look like it has a seam, but it's not there. I don't know if that's making sense. So that you can take like it apart. Like we can take it apart. Yeah, exactly. And you can attach it with Velcro together, um, with my leg armor too. Like I have the knee separated sometimes from the shoe armor. And then I just stack it up. And for my props, like my Moana staff, for example, that can be broken up into three pieces. Because Perfect for traveling. For, for traveling. And I had to make sure that when I had it cut at the, you know, like with the bandsaw, that it was less than 30 inches, at least maximum 27 or 26 inches, because that's the size of my suitcase. And then on that, like I add like those, um, I don't know, like those connectors that like you can get, you can screw it together and then yeah. just roll it up. Yeah. And then so you can assemble it on site. So what I did are the seams would be the handle so it doesn't look like a seam. And you get to cover it when you're with your hand and everything else. So that's kind of how I cheat and then just kind of plan beforehand before you do your build. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. How about the suits? Or how about your makeup room? Uh, I have a makeup room, but it's disguised with old furniture. I, I, I collect uh, antiques. So I have like these really secretaire things. I have like a lot of drawers. drawers. Mm -hmm. So I keep everything in there and it looks nice. 
So it looks beautiful in the outside, but then there's the mess in the inside, you know? That's because what draws o- otherwise for. my home would look horrible. Like imagine all like the boxes of like makeup stuff. So that's why I, I had the idea like, oh, I'll, I'll get this secretaire and then I'll just put everything in, in the in the drawers. And then for the costume and the and the accessories, I I do have like a it's, a, it's a really tiny room, but it's like well organized. Like I have a, a room like with fabrics, resins, foams. Uh, then I have my my other tiny room with like my costumes that I keep in like plastic bags that I vacuum okay. so that they compress less space. I do I do that with pretty much everything except velvet because velvet hair will get damaged. Pretty much all my costumes are like stored in like plastic bags or plastic containers in like a small room. So you can also take everything apart and just stack it neatly. Yes, and I have labels like. Part A, part B, and stuff like that. So the most important thing is to be organized. Yes, I think it's very important. And I learned that the hard way, because I was not that organized at first. <laughs> oh, no. Do you have a funny story for that? Yeah, because we do have to actually kind of wrap it up. So if you have any really funny anecdotes about airport traveling, for example, or any of your storage, your costumes breaking on set, this would be the perfect ending for this. Well, yeah, for me, and it was not like a mistake from the outside, it was me. I forgot, I went to a convention as Jack Skellington, and I forgot my bow tie and my and my cravat. I was in the middle of nowhere. I, I was in Dominican Republic, and I didn't have like any craft stores around, so you, you got to make it work. But that, that was just my mistake, you know? Worrying at first, but you need to make it work. I just went to like the garden, And then I took a bunch of like dry uh, plants and then I airbrushed them black. And then I did a really quick bow tie for Jack Skellington. Oh. And it looked okay, but you could notice that there were plants in my bow tie, you know? <laughs> just call it an original design. Yes, just yeah. in black. <laughs> yes. Okay, so for me, other than the fact that my luggage actually made it on time, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, I lost my luggage um, during my layover. It didn't make it. So the night before I arrived the car, and I was like, I have no stuff, what do? So I was just like, I don't care, I'm going to go nap. So I napped for three hours. <laughs> and That's then I so wake relatable. up, I'm like, I'm tired and jet lagged. I'm like, I don't even have emotions right now. <laughs> I'm just going to sleep. <laughs> and then I woke up, and then the organizer like, asked um, the airport security or whatever. They said that my luggage was going to arrive that night with the next flight that's coming from Zurich because that's where my layover was. So at least I got it the night before, thank the Lord. But then that, that's not where the story ends. Okay, so I get my costume, right? The next day, <laughs> it was like, other than the fact that it was a struggle putting my Moana tattoo, I like telling the story like it was in the past, but this was yesterday. <laughs> I was putting my top and my zipper, my zipper for my Moana top, just gave in. It was done. And so I tried and I was just like, I don't have pins. I'm so organized. <laughs> But then I, was, I had a hook, so I had a hook and then I had the zipper kind of halfway. So it was a broken zipper. But then I was like, you know what? My hair is going to cover this. So I survived the entire day <laughs> by covering with my it. top in a bro- by wearing a broken zipper. And nobody you still noticed. looked amazing. <laughs> the, the rule of thumb is coming from the prop industry. If nobody sees it, it's going to be fine. Yeah. And if it gets covered, it's going to be fine. So I used my really thick wig to cover the disaster that is in my back. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you for sharing this secret. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to tell this now. <laughs> So a uh, quick funny story, uh, I guess the funniest thing that I experience is trying to get this home after every convention. Uh, it's the same weight, uh, it doesn't have a barrel, but it looks like it does. So uh, getting here is no problem, for some reason, you know, they, they don't, they don't uh, mess with you coming from the United States, no. but I've had four of these confiscated in four different countries, and the build up to that Paging Cecil Garner, would you please come to interrogation room 52? Cecil Garner, please. And this is in Bogota, Colombia. I'm like, th- that was the first time it happened. And um, so I, I get there, and this was actually going to one of the conventions. 
Lair was in Bogota, going to Ecuador, Ecuador Comic Con. So you get your bags, you have to go to customs, you know, when you come into the country, and they put your bags through the... Um, through the scanner? Through the scanner, through the metal detector, and uh, the x-ray. And I wasn't thinking about it, you know, because it's a toy gun. It's not real, but it definitely acts like it, feels like it. Oh, it's full metal. Yeah, it's, it, you can't really tell the difference unless you look inside. So I get my stuff, I, I take my big bag, and they're, they're making you put your bag on the, uh, the, the belt, and it goes through an x-ray. So I'm not thinking anything. Well, I'm watching the x-ray machine, and that's all you see on the, on the screen. <laughs> it, it's, it is sideways instead of up and down, so it looked like it was a levitating gun in my bag. <laughs> and in, in Bogota, brrr, all the security start coming around. And I, uh, I put, you know, in, in Spanish, I'm an actor, this is a prop, all that. But they were pretty cool in, in customs, you know? It's like, no, uh, Walking Dead. Oh, Walking Dead. And, uh, and they open it up, you know, they say, they, they say, open it up. And I said, there it is. And I show them it's no barrel. I said, okay, I've moved on, right? So I take my bags, I put it on the next airline. I fall asleep at the, t at the uh, terminal. And that's when I got interrogation room 52. Please come to interrogation room. So the airline picked it up. So I'm at gate one. Gate 52 is the last gate in the airport. And I'm, I'm trying to find it. So they, they, they go through all this, go into this, this private room with two Colombian police officers, two security, the, the management. And they say, uh, please open the case and take out the, uh, the, you know, the, the uh, thing in question. I'm like, if this is a real gun, you're giving me access to it? Is that smart? I mean, really, I, wouldn't you take that out for me? You know? So I do, I open it up, yeah, they, they look at it. Thank God one of the cops was a Walking Dead fan. It saved me so many times. Perfect. That's how I got yeah. across the border in Canada. Wow. The, Walking Dead, they did, they took <laughs> selfies. That being the first time I learned, never, never pack your gun like this, always put in the zipper up and down with some other stuff and it looks like a, just a, a metal rod instead of a gun. And uh, they let me keep it, but uh, they took my gun in Peru, uh, it's Peru and the Philippines. <laughs> The Philippines, was it Philippines? No, it's Peru or Philippines. Every security guard in the airport come running. I because think maybe they did not want to take it because it's a gun, but they wanted just a souvenir from you. Yeah, I think, that, that, I think that's what happened. This is, so they all do this because it, you t you, it, there you have to go through the x-ray before you get into the airport. And they're like, oh. And so they all take f selfies with me. I'm like, I got this. I got this. I got my gun. And he's like... Oh, no, 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 you can't have this. I'm like, you all just took selfies. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, okay, enjoy the prop. Enjoy my $100 prop. So, yeah. Uh, so now, everywhere I go, I bring one and I leave it at the convention. Ah, oh, nice. That's my secret. I Thanks think for this, the story. Is, I <laughs> think this is, is the convention yes. ending, Well, thank actually. you so much for right. sharing some funny stories in the end. Thank you so much. Thank you for being thank on you, stage thank you, thank you. and thank you for being on our podcast. Uh, Thanks for having us. Check these people out. It's Cecil Grimes on all social media accounts. Yes. Galaxy K and Juice Skellington. J-O-O. -O. So just look it up. Type them up. Thank That's you. Thank it. you so Take much. Care. Thank you so much. And bye.